good luck with that. Now, if you thought it was just women who face pressure to look good, you'd be wrong. Outnumbered star Tiger Drew Honey is investigating issues affecting young people for a series of documentaries, and this week he's looking at male body image and just how far some will go for the perfect look. In the next town, Curtis introduced me to his friend Mitch, who's also 18. Twice a month, he sees his local wow. intimate waxer who removes everything. And so how many, how many guys get this done? 70% of my clients are male. The youngest one is Mitch, and I have a client, the oldest one is 65. Perhaps in the name of journalism, I signed up for a back sack and crack. Who's worse, girls or guys? Definitely guys. Definitely guys. Oh! Oh! You say never? No. Mm. You'd never do it? That's too much pain. It was very painful, but yeah. the thing is, loads of guys nowadays are actually feeling like they have to do this to feel... Why? I don't know, it's absurd, because, like, 20 years ago, you used to have beards and rugged and hairy chest and whatnot, but now um, there's a lot of guys thinking that that's just really, really unhygienic and ugly and unattractive, and so every six weeks they go through immense pain. So we're, 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 we've got, so there's so much to, to talk about, but as we've started on that, let, let, let's start on that. Uh, you had it done. Yes. Had you ever had it done before? No, I hadn't. No. Uh, and the the, f the finished result? Well, the finished result. I mean, you know, it did exactly what it said. I had no hair anywhere down there, and um, I guess there are slight positives in the sense that maybe it's slightly more hygienic. But it made me feel like prepubescent, and uh. it was it was kind of strange. It was like it didn't feel manly. It and felt the pain. Like, the pain and the pain was really really terrible. Yeah. Welcome to um, our world. <laughs> <laughs> The, um, the guy that was with you there, so this is something he does regularly. What's his reason for doing it? Well, he just says he feels more confident in himself when he feels smooth. And that's really? basically it. I mean, initially he said it was because he was um, doing bodybuilding, but actually his first competition isn't quite a way down the line. So um, I kind of saw through that and said, well, hang on. And he said, well, no, it's just because I like it. Is well, he... uh, Kieran, Kieran's here because uh, we were chatting earlier on yeah. in with the Hollyoaks crowd, and we thought um, it would be quite interesting to chat to you about this as well. Um, and so, uh, so do you feel pressure? And, and we're talking about this, the hair thing at the moment. We'll move on to other stuff in yeah. a second. You said you've never done that. I would never do that. Like, obviously, you want to, you want to keep clean and be hygienic, but there's another way of doing it. You can just trim. Trim well, the beard, you yeah. can trim other things, yeah, yeah, yeah. And keep clean. Uh, that, to it me, is a bit too... It seems to be um, a, a sort of thing that's... That it starts off with people going, oh, hairy shoulders, and then it was like, oh, hairy back, get rid of that, and then it was hairy chest. And now it seems to have just, like, gone on and on and on. It's like it's never enough. It seems to be growing somehow. This I'm, obsession. I don't, or, or, well, that's or the not. annoying thing, isn't it? <laughs> if it didn't do that, you wouldn't need to take it off. <laughs> but I think it's this, um, this whole kind of, this cult of uh, selfies as well, with people constantly posting selfies everywhere, editing them, you know, taking 50, make sure they look perfect, um, and then posting them. We're constantly surrounded by everyone's sort of self-propaganda. And because they look the best that they can look, and it's not a natural look, we feel inadequate if we don't look like that. And because they don't have any hairs, then it makes us feel like we have to do that to be sort of accepted. The hair removal thing is one thing, but actually, d d during making the documentary, you saw how dangerous this can go, and this was sort of people taking certain things to, mm -hmm. to enhance their bodies, things that had a massive effect on your health. Um, well, yeah, basically, there was this one guy I met called Marcus, and um, he, as an 18-year-old boy, he used to get up um, ridiculously early, 3, 4 in the morning, go to the gym, take so many supplements, go to the gym after he got home from work. Um, and he did that for a couple of years, and he was pushing his body so hard that at 18 he actually had a heart attack, um, and he was rushed to hospital. And now it's really strange because he feels like he's lost so much of the, the progress that he made with his body. He's still got an absolutely lovely body, body to die for, but he feels like it's terrible, and he wouldn't show me it, and he wouldn't do anything because he feels like he's just ugly and skinny. So you, you as a team, looked on Instagram to see what it was that he was hiding and thought, you know, God, you'd kill for that body. Yeah, I would have killed for that body. And, you know, these supplements that he was taking, I took them, and um, I was uh, hooked up to an ECG machine, which is some technical thing that measures the... Um, something of your heart. This is a legal supplement you can... This is, this not is a legal supplement you can buy out anywhere. of any shop, really. So um, this, is, this, is, this is a machine that's testing the electrical impulses of your heart. That's exactly what it is. And, um, and basically, as soon as I took it, my, my heart was tachycardic almost instantly, which means the, the rate was going up and going down and going up and down, and it was just really fluctuating in a Did not normal way. Did it feel like it was? Uh, it, it does feel like a, a certain type of drug. It really does. So I was know, going to say, if you weren't wired up to that monitor and you took the thing and you went training, would you know that your heart was doing that? No, you'd have no idea. And the thing is, if 
say, God forbid, you had an underlying heart condition, which a lot of 18, 19 year old boys haven't sort of got tested for. They're not interested in that, really. And it does exist. And it does exist. You know, if you have one of them and you take maybe one of these supplements or a double dose of these supplements, which everyone is doing, then you could potentially drop dead. Yeah. And that's where the term actually does come from, then, a body to die for. You can yeah. literally well, die. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, how much pressure have you felt? Um, obviously, being in Hollyoaks and stuff and sharing a dressing room with lots of the guys, when it, especially when we used to do the calendar, um, it's hard to get away from the fact that there is like muscly guys in there and guys with six packs and stuff. And I have secretly thought to myself, I wish I could look like that. Now I've tried to eat really healthy, eat red meat and do all this, go to the gym. Nothing happens with my body. And I suppose it's the same as a girl looking in a magazine and seeing this beautiful model. I look at these guys and think, I want to be like that. I don't want to be skinny. Doing dance and nice years and years ago, I remember Jason Gardner used to have a thing about my weight and saying I looked a bit flimsy and stuff. And that to me, felt it was like a personal attack and it really made me feel very insecure about it. Hammered the gym, nothing happened and it just so turns out this is my physique and there's nothing I can do to change that and I'm happy with that. I'd rather be happy than healthy than unhappy and Yeah, mostly. absolutely. Can I ask you the question then, is, is this sort of focus on men changing? Are they becoming more in the spotlight? Are they putting themselves under this pressure more now than ever before or has it always been there? Well, I think, I think, you know, for years it's been, uh, you know, body image issues have been associated primarily with women and girls. But I do think there has been a transition in the last sort of five, ten years with social media and stuff and constantly putting pictures everywhere of everyone. That's the way we communicate now, Exactly. With things like Snapchat and Instagram, we communicate in pictures. So, you know, there's an argument to say that actually maybe it is slightly more important the way we look than the type of person we are and what we yeah. say. Um, and I think in the last five, ten years, it really has exploded, and it kind of needs to be addressed because I, so many young I guys have got confidence. I asked my hairdresser the same question last night, and he said he goes to the gym on a Friday night. That's his ritual. He does that, and he said he's seen a massive shift the last twelve months, maybe two years. On a Friday night is the night when all the guys are in the gym because they're going out and they're doing that last-minute pump because they want to look absolutely <gasps> really? the best, moisturising, really? fake tanning in the mirror in the changing rooms, which is something twelve months, two years ago never really happened. That but much. what's interesting though is that is that you say. That that it, guys do that not to impress the girls, but to impress other guys. Yeah, that is one of the things that I did find out. I mean, obviously there's an element of it being for girls, but a lot of the time it's really to kind of, to show off to other guys who are trying to do the same thing. It's like, look, I'm a bit bigger than you. And they, they were saying, you know, if on, a, on their Instagram and whatnot, if they get a comment from a girl saying, oh, you look hot, that's like, yeah, okay, cool. But if they get a comment from a guy saying, wow, man, how'd you do that? That really boosts their egos. And is it like a competitive thing? Is it sort of like a masculine sort of, I don't know, is it sort of a natural trait that's in that? I think it's sort of maybe trying to be the alpha male a bit and kind of show that you're the biggest one, you're the most gorgeous one, and that's why you're the best. So normally it would be the hunt, the kill, you'd come back with the biggest whatever it is. <laughs> but because my life has moved on, it's now how big your muscles are. Yeah, is that it what? pretty much is, yeah. And I just think, it, I do need to say this really quickly because it's shocking what you're saying about people doing the pump before they go out. I met these group of lads in Essex. They actually do a 45 minute teeth whitening um, UV program every, night, every Saturday before they before go out. Night out. They'll literally lie there for 45 minutes and have their teeth whitened before they go out. <laughs> go on. Go on. <laughs> okay, it seems like it's more acceptable, like main gro male grooming is more acceptable, it's more ready available, there's more places you can go and walk in, and you, but you won't sort of, it's, it's not something that people are going to go, you what? You want to have your chest waxed? I think it's reality like, oh, yes, shows are a big thing, like I've watched Geordie Shaw and I see the guys and they're getting their eyebrows done and the tanning and all this, yeah. Yes. So I think, I think that's got a big thing to answer for it, reality shows, that you, you're seeing this on TV, so you're like, well I'm going to do it because I want to look like them. And, and these guys are really popular, so. Yeah. Do you have uh, any insecurities? Um, well, I mean, yes. I, I, I mean, you know, I feel a bit fat, um, especially in the documentary. I've, I've actually lost a tiny bit of weight since then. But being surrounded by all these guys with amazing bodies, and you know, me with my little fat pack and scrawny arms, it's kind of a bit like, you know, I don't feel most comfortable here. Mm. Um, it, it, is there any way out of this, though? Well, I mean, the, the way out of it is for me to devote the next five years of my life to my body. So what about them? What about all the others? What about all the other guys who sit there, gay or straight, who are looking at themselves thinking, right, OK, I'm going to do this because I'm doing it either for me or for the competition, uh, it, uh, damn the health issues? Well, I think, you know, if you really want to do it, do it. There, there is no harm in doing it. But try not to reach a level of obsession where you can't feel happy in yourself uh, unless you have that body. And try and find a limit because one of the things I learned when I met all these people is they look, they, they look fantastic but they're still not happy there's mm, more they want to strive for it. and I think that's the dangerous thing reach a level and think actually you know what I am happy and and we can all be happy in our own skin well like you have you yeah. say that's Absolutely. what you've done I've, I, the other extreme as well I know guys that have actually had lips done Botox oh that's now a, a new craze but yeah. I think it's something I wouldn't do because 
I always feel, why would you want to change your actual features of your face? I love my mum and dad. Yeah. I want the face that they give me, Absolutely. not something that a doctor gave me. Tiger takes on uh, the uh, This body. Is the Perfect Body tonight at nine on BBC Three. Thank you for coming. Thank you You're going to come next week and talk about dating as well, I think. I hope you? so, yeah. So, yeah. Thank you. Thank good. you, Kira. Good, good, Thank good. You. Thank you.